presents the Master League Division Series. Tonight from Olympic Stadium, it's the Philadelphia Phillies and the Montreal Expos. The National League Division Series is brought to you by Lowenbrow. When you want the taste of a truly great beer, there's really only one. Tonight, let it be Lowenbrow. By Ford and your Ford dealer, who invites you to test drive the 1982 Ford Cars and Trucks. By Prell, the shampoo that frees your hair to be beautifully full and thick. And by Hertz, the car rental company that's number one for everyone. in Montreal's Olympic Stadium. No batting practice because of the rain, but it's dry at the moment. Game two, the Phillies, the defending World Series champions against the Montreal Expos. Hello, everyone. Dick Enberg along with Cy Young Award winner three times, Tom Seaver. At the start of the series, they all said Steve Carlton had to win for the Phillies in game one. Montreal beat him. Well, Philadelphia certainly, certainly wanted to get a win out of the big guy, Steve Carlton, but he simply made a lot of bad pitches, and he was outpitched by Steve Rogers. Uh, before this series started, Philadelphia 0-5 in this ballpark. Now they're 0-6 in this ballpark. If they want to win, they've got to beat Bill Gullickson, who's only 7-9, but his numbers indicate that he had a better year than that. So we're set to go. The first inning, and Lonnie Smith will lead it off for the Philadelphia Bills. And the temperature is dropping. They expect it may be in the low 40s before this game is through. Bill Gullickson, just 22 years of age, 7-9 and nine on the year, 2.81 ERA, facing Smith, Rose, and McBride in the Philly first inning. Smith, red hot for the bat, and a 24-game hitting streak. There's the defensive alignment for the Expos, the battery of Gullickson and Carter, Parrish, Spire, Manuel, and Cromarty around the horn. Terry Francona, Andre Dawson, and Jerry White left to right in the outfield. And the count quickly, two strikes on Smith. talk about 
pitching being important in the playoffs. Look at the runs for the losers. The Dodgers only got one run in two games at Houston. Only one run for the Phillies yesterday in losing. And of course, the Brewers were shut out today after scoring three in last night's game. And in the other American League series, look at the A's. Two runs, uh, one run in uh, their loss last night and were shut out in the first game. So in the other seven playoff games, the losing team has scored a total of only six runs.
had some back problems. He tried to compensate. Uh, got his front shoulder opening up too much. And he's a very analytical type of pitcher. Uh, but many times with an injury, if you try to do things and pitch or hit or whatever with an injury, you get into a lot of bad habits, and that's what happened to Dick. And he did pitch very poorly in the second half. In fact, one four, lost four. This, this was his overall record, but in the second half, he was four and four with an ERA of 6.75. you hit the ball as you can see from that hit to him well that one bouncing up and got played umpire frank fully that one missed home plate by 10 feet there are the measurements here at olympic stadium 12 foot fence 325 in the corners 375 behind the left and right fielder and 404 to straightaway center it looks to be a bigger ballpark the perspective of the hitter Watching game two, but their love for hockey also quite in evidence. This is the opening night of the National Hockey League season for their beloved Montreal Canadiens. Two and two to Cromarty. Back up the middle, and Ruthven handles the one hopper. One away. tonight he's got to get ahead of the hitters and be able to get his breaking ball over when he's behind if he does get behind he doesn't he threw very hard when he came up to the major leagues from my where i grew up present state present state kid next bulldog home is sacramento california jerry white switch hitting outfielder one for three yesterday Right back 
back into your living room. Talking to Herm Surratt before the game, the pitching coach from the Philadelphia Phillies, that if Rudman is going to be affected, when he does get behind, he's going to have to get the breaking ball over. Here's a shot at Dix. A little bit unorthodox delivery, but when he does release the ball, he gets in a good throwing position, and he went with his fastball when he got behind. Breaking ball, it's off the fist to second. Frio with an easy play, and Ruthven with an impressive first inning. A couple of soft ground outs and a pop fly as the Phillies go down. And Matthews had a triple in four at-bats yesterday. Collection with a strike. Gary, the National League Rookie of the Year in 1972 with the Giants. so cold. 
told that it was tough to grip the ball. You just didn't have the feeling in your hands. Now the hitter is going to give you the indication that that may be the case at times. How about the pitcher? Well, many times uh, early in the season up here in Montreal or maybe even Minnesota, one of the northern parts, when you're playing in April, you're playing in weather sometimes 36, 38 degrees. I mean, and it's, it's not much fun. And, and you, just, you try and work as fast as you can to keep warm. Try not to stand around. Moreland at first, two outs. 3-0 the hitter. And with two on in the ninth inning yesterday, he hit a shot to left field. When it left his bat, I think both dugouts thought that might be a game-tying double. But Francona was able to go back and snare it for the last out of the game. Two balls, no strikes. 3-0, another good season for Philadelphia, hitting 287 on the year. pitches, good live fastball, good breaking curveball, and a good changeup. Uh, most of those pitches he tries to go in and out, but most of his pitches he'll keep away. So that's uh, basically the way I'll approach, approach him tonight, and I'll see probably more of an excess of breaking ball. He guessed right. Opens with a breaking ball away. Carter had two home runs off Ruthven this year. Let's say you're 
Hickey Bersoff is going into home plate. Well, I might come in and try and pick up Larry Parrish's left elbow. There, that's where I want to throw it. Boom, right there. So I may pick that up as I go to home plate. Even if you're throwing a pitch like that, a curveball away, that's the spot you're saying, oh, that's your, your guiding point. No, I would pick that up, say, for my fastball. But for the curveball, now let's say I want to throw a curveball. Look at Moreland's right knee. I may pick that up. Boom, my, eye, my head comes up and I'll pick that up. That's really narrowing your focus. Narrowing focus, but it's a discipline that gets you to throw the ball where you want it. Instead of looking at the entire strike zone, I found, well, for me, it helps me. It also keeps my weight forward on my right foot as I go into my delivery. And I don't get too far back. You get me started on this pitching <laughs> stuff, no, you know, we're going to get away from this ball game. Get right to third, and Schmidt with a long throw.
field in can be disastrous, but it was high enough for Trio to collect it for the second out. So Manuel unable to get a run home on and out. Brad Cohn is still at third. Spiro at second. And Jim Fanning, who took over the reins as the Montreal manager in September. Sands his pitcher Bill Gullickson up there. Want to say hello to Dick Williams, the ex-skipper of the Expos. They say he left uh, graciously his job here and said, I wish nothing but the best for Fanning and for this Montreal club. Dick and his friends and family watching down in Tampa, Florida tonight. Gullickson had seven hits this year and one RBI, one swing. He could really help himself in this fight. Opposing pitcher and gets out of it with one unearned run, one hit, one error, and two men left in scoring position. One nothing Montreal. We'll be back after these men. <laughs> <laughs> one nothing Montreal. A little heat set up by Gullickson to the opposing pitcher Dick, Dick Ruthman, who hit 140 on the year, seven hits in 50 events. before the game. You talk about a mature 22-year-old. I said, what's your out pitch? He says, well, depending on what kind of hitter. I said, you sound like a 32-year-old pitcher, not a 22-year-old. But he moved like a 22-year-old there and threw a seed over to first base. And they say it's not just baseball where he reflects that maturation that in all social and emotional aspects that he really handles himself like a man uh, 10 years beyond his age. Smith to left center field. Dawson outruns it. Now Dawson has the second out of this third inning. Two pitches, two outs. He throws. Round of the short, his first time up. Now we talked about Ruthman dropping his head in his delivery. We're going to watch Gullickson and how he works the way most of us were taught, and that is you get your sign, you pick up the target, you go into the windup, you keep your eyes riveted on that target and throw it. I think most pitchers, I mean, most pitching coaches would teach their young pitchers to keep their eye on that target all the time. And pitching is such a such a collection of little things. It's uh, What's good for one may not be good for another. Personally, I find when I, when I have my head back, you can see Pete Rose's stats, what a year he had. I find that when I watch the sign all the way, watch the target all the way, my weight gets too far back. Just to have my head going back gets my weight too far back behind my right leg, whereas if I keep my head down, it keeps my weight right on top of my right leg. So it's a very, uh, it's a very fine line. And for some pitchers it will work, for other pitchers it won't work. See, I mean, but he has fine mechanics. He gets in the fine throwing position. He had plenty on that fastball. Enough that Rose wanted to take a look at the ball. Strike two. We talked with Pete early this year down in Clearwater in spring training. and said, name some of the young pitchers that you really liked last year. And he came up with Gullickson's name first. Two hopper to Manuel. And Gullickson works another easy inning. One, two, three. Then Billy's go. First time I've been nervous is when I... Uh... When I left school, what I wasn't supposed to, my mother came and got me. And then later on, my father came and got me. But, you know, there's nothing compared with this. It's a whole different atmosphere. And uh, let's hope we can play some real good baseball. <laughs> well, you don't forget, when <laughs> mom and dad come after you, you bet you're nervous. Part of the Miami connection from Artie and Dawson. Bounce back to the mound in the first inning. Ruthman, who changes speed so well, took a little off that one, drops it in for a strike. He's really enjoyed that leadoff spot since Tim Raines broke his hand in Chicago in mid-September. Turned that one over a little bit. And he, again, took some speed off the fastball. One and one. Pitches that are going to make Dick Ruthven effective. That breaking ball. From Marty, a fastball. 
hitter. Try and hit the ball up in the alley in left field. He likes to go to the opposite field. Yesterday, his single and his double both to left field. Ruthman gave up over six runs, earned runs a game against Montreal this season.
like that. Our speed pitch and you hang it, get it up. They're not going to miss it very often. Big hit by the Expo catcher. Three to nothing, Expo. Now Gary Carter, who won the All-Star Game Most Valuable Player Award with two home runs as the National League again beat the Americans. It's his first playoff home run. With two out and Cromartie a third. Three nothing Expo. Parrish. High ball one. Parrish, who struggled most of the year, had a fine September and was voted the Expo's player of the year the final month of the year. Boa across to Rose. Inning is over. But not before Gary Carter had cleared the left field wall. Two runs. Two hits. No one left. It's 3 nothing Montreal. McBride, the rookie of the year in 74 in the National League with the St. Louis Cardinals. And he sends a soft out to third. McBride with the only hit for the Bills. And handcuffed on that one from Gullickson. Schmidt grounded to short his first at bat. Schmidt's thoughts on the man he opposes now, the right-hander Gullickson of the Expos. Well, Bill Gullickson, to me, is one of the best right-handers that I've ever faced. Uh, his record wouldn't indicate that, but uh, it's no fun going into the batter's box. It's a real challenge for a hitter like myself. i got to lay off the high fastball, and when I get a pitch to hit, i got to do something with it because he's a tough pitcher, he's a strikeout pitcher, and uh, we just have to hope he makes some mistakes, walks some people, and we can take advantage of it. So far, no mistakes, Fishman or anyone else, as Gullickson combining that fastball with a crisp breaking ball. He calls it a slur, half slider, half curve. That ball hit to center. And it's Dawson in between White and Manuel with a catch. For a moment there, I wasn't sure anyone was calling. You know, Dick, the more you watch that guy, Dawson, he just reminds me so much of Willie Mays. Being able to cover so much of the outfield, great speed, great power. He's going to develop into the, if not already, the best player in the league. I think many people around, baseball people, would say it's a toss-up between Andre Dawson and Mike Schmidt right now. He's been a well-kept secret, and part of that is the fact that he's playing here in Montreal and fans don't hear the full details of his talent. The guys in the dugout know about Andre Dawson. Matthews, who had a solid season his first year in Philadelphia, hitting over 300. Right up there in many of the league categories. Thank you. 
Vincey back, so he had to work against Campbell in practice. High in the air. Harris waiting for it to come down. since my last one and uh, hopefully we can <laughs> make out a little bit better than I did on my first try. Of course that was with the San Francisco Giants back in 1971 10 years ago. Good solid player. And again the blend of age and youth on this Montreal team. The young kids looking at Sparrow saying he's just so solid nothing seems to upset him. You're talking about experience the, the Montreal people coaches that is Byers, the, the settling force in the infield. He doesn't have the range that a lot of shortstops might have, but he makes the plays that he gets to. He's got the steady plays. Every ball that he gets to, he's got a chance to get a fine, accurate, consistent arm. Turns a double play as well as anybody can turn a double play. He's made his adjustment uh, through the years, hitting 225 this year. First came up, he had some power. I think one year he had 14, 15 home runs with the Giants. He had only two home runs this year, so he just going up on the bat, trying to make contact, and has done that so far against the Bills.
make it through. Just another part of his life. If nothing else you talked about his maturity. Something else that he's dealt with very successfully, very easily. Well, what a fastball on the outside corner. When would you normally uh, eat on the day you pitch? Uh, night game, 8 o'clock. I'd be having a meal or about uh, 1 or 2 o'clock. And that would be it until post game. Another one off the fist. And Manuel out to make the play. on the phone down there have a special order he's not throwing many pitches down the middle of the plate two jam shots in this inning hitters off balance because he can get his breaking ball over at any time good hard fastball gross will pinch hit for dick ruthen so ruthen works the first four innings giving up three runs two of them earned and the big blow carter's two run home run
pitchers aren't going to wait for that thing to curve. Theory time sheet for that. <laughs> Another one. You huh? take it easy on the opposing pitcher. <laughs> oh, no, never. Maybe once with Jerry Kuzma when I pitch against my buddy. <laughs> that was all. Two and two. If you get him in three pitches, you want him out of there.
teams, even when the carpet is dry, to feel the ground ball for the first time off the artificial surface. You can get yourself handcuffed in a hurry, much less when it scoots the way it, it squirted off the grass for the artificial grass that time. Andre Dawson up, two out. And Brewster keeping an eye on White. Dawson, of course, you get a... A star like he is, you want a nickname. They call him Hawk here and Awesome Dawson. What do you call him, Tom? Can't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine he can't. Depends <laughs> if he strikes out or if he hits the ball hard or hits the ball out of the ballpark. He got a great swing, very fast inside. It looks like he's going into that play like you'd be able to pitch him inside, but he is quick in there. Extremely quick inside. If you're going to go inside with it, boy, you really got to get in there hard. Don't feel too sorry for those players sitting on that bench. There's heaters up above them. Should we tell them there's heaters up above us, too, or not? There's an example of that right there. Good to be a guayo. He was uh, taking batting practice yesterday in earmuffs, and they were inside. second best home record in the league. There he goes. Now Jerry White, who stole twice yesterday successfully, gets himself in scoring position with two out in the fifth. Portland doesn't get a bad pitch to handle. Fastball down and in. Set an all-time major league stolen base record for a rookie with 71, and Rodney Scott with 30, 101 stolen bases, basically out of the lineup. Dawson a check swing, and Boa trying to come to the plate, and White is out. So Boa actually made that play as the ball was by him into center field, and alertly knowing he couldn't get Dawson at first base, made the quick spin and caught White rounding third. Dawson hits the ball right back up the middle. Good heads-up play by Larry Boa, the shortstop. A lot of experience at that shortstop position. He knows he has no chance at Dawson at first. Turns around and picks up White going home. Good heads-up play. And a perfect four-hop throw to Moreland for the out. It remains 3-0 Montreal. We are now moving forward in this program. premier pitcher in Steve Carlton, and that just has given us the overall confidence to carry over in tonight's ball game against Dick Ruthman. And of course that confidence uh, spells a 3-0 lead, and Ruthman already in the showers. Sparky Lyle begins to warm up for Philadelphia. Brewster, of course that may be optimistic thinking on the part of Dallas Green, and that the Brewster would hit fifth in the seventh inning. Second inning of pitching. Well, especially in this weather, I think you're going to have to give your pitchers a little bit more time to get loose. There's Sparky Lyle, veteran left hand reliever for the Phillies. In Boston, played for the Yankees, Texas. Out of the Bronx Zoo. World Series, here we come.
Jackie Robinson played in Montreal. Had a great baseball time for a long time prior to becoming a major league town. Larry Parrish, safe on an air and scored. Came around on Spire, a single in the second. And grounded to short. His other time up. Francona would be next. One and two. You know, talking about this town, Dick, and, and the ball team they have now, I mean, their heroes are Dawson and Carter and Cromartie and the rest of them. Well, like any franchise team, any expansion team, they progressed in the early days of Rusty Staub and John Bacabella. They really had, they have quite a history. They had very colorful players up here early. Mac Jones, remember Mac Jones in the left left fielder, they used to have Jones uh, over at Old Jerry Park, they had the fans in left field, you know, Max Marauders or whatever they were. A lot of names have come through this franchise, and they have themselves a fine team now. Yeah, they became a winner three years ago in 79, again last year, losing out in the final week, final game, and this year, on the final Saturday, clinching a playoff spot in this unusual baseball year.
go to the seventh. Phillies need three to tie. And a nice crowd tonight, 45,896. To see game two of this playoff series. And Montreal trying to go back to Philadelphia, putting the pressure on the World Series champs. And Gullickson has played, played and pitched as well as a man can. He is the main man putting the pressure on that Philly offense. There's no question about it. They'll face Gary Matthews, Keith Moreland, and Larry Boa. And so far in these first two games, the Expos hitting timely, pitching outstanding, and defense flawless. Matthews a single to right field this last time up. Bill Gullickson in this inning and expert eye of Tom Seaver. Oof, was that a wicked breaking ball? <laughs> what an optical illusion. You know, after the first pitch, he gets his strike on the first pitch. That's a good slider running off the plate. Another breaking ball, third ball. Hit of the hitter, one ball, two strikes. Now he's got a whole bunch of things that he can do. Go outside, go inside. September, not 1981, but in 1980, Gullickson struck out 18 Cubs in a game, but that's just one off the Major League record. Good example of setting up a pitch. Threw the slider away earlier. First fastball that Matthew's seen, and, and this time at bat, and he's way behind it. Now facing Keith Mullen, who has walked and fouled out. You share the Major League record in nine innings, 19 strikeouts with Steve Carlton, Nolan Ryan, our buddy Nolan Ryan down in Houston. Did that when he was chucking for the old California Angels out there, didn't he? I had a pleasure to call that one as I did his no hitters with the Angels, and I know I was as pleased as you were to help celebrate from long distance Ryan's fifth no hitter. Quite a man. Okay. 
many outstanding years, decades of baseball broadcasting. When you came to the playoffs in the World Series so many times, we heard Jack Brickhouse, the voice of the Chicago Cubs for over 40 years. Jack uh, has announced his retirement at the end of this year, and they had a big day for him in Chicago. They're going to name the radio booth part of the press box after Jack Brickhouse, and to a good friend and a man who's contributed to this job. We wish him many, many happy years. Thanks for all the great memories of work. Jack Brickhouse and all the fans in Chicago remember, hey, 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 every time a home run out of Wiggly Field. Dawson with a rip at a 2-0 pitch. In the bullpen, the left-hander McGraw, the right-hander Reed. Dawson, one for three, an infield hit. tonight and had two steals yesterday so he's a threat with two outs to go it's three nothing Montreal and they're trying to add to their lead here in the seventh two gone Matthews and the third in the sixth inning by Lonnie Smith. 
Smith. In that inning, a fine defensive play on McBride's ball by the second baseman Manuel snuffed out the only near threat the Bills have had. As you mentioned last inning, Gullickson, three complete games and 22 starts. Going into this inning, he had 92 pitches. So far, he should still be strong, especially with the cool weather. We're in a lot of strikes. Getting ahead of his hitters, mixing up his pitches, doing the kinds of things that a pitcher has to do to win ball games. George Vukovic, who had a base hit as a pinch hitter in the last inning yesterday, batting for Sparky Lyle. Al Gullickson has certainly carried out his game plan just for I think in order to beat the Phillies, I have to go out and uh, pitch my game, go out there. Uh, Keep him honest, don't let him uh, sit on my fastball, get my breaking ball over in a fastball situation. That's simple enough, breaking ball over in a fastball situation.
pitcher normally has got to get five, four or five, or six outs in a ball game to win it. And this is the big one, because the man on deck is Mike Schmidt. Out of play, and he's in front of McBride. One ball, two strikes. If you get Mike Schmidt out, Mike Schmidt leads off the ninth. He can't tie up the ball game. He can't get into a situation where he can hurt you. So McBride, who was elevated from the fifth spot behind Schmidt to the third spot, trying to give his teammates the home run RBI leader in the National League and the Major Leagues a chance to swing here in the eighth inning with a chance to get the Phils not only in the game but ahead. And he's done it. Rose around second to third on a double by McBride and the tying run in scoring position for Mike Schmidt. Gullickson giving up three hits in the game suddenly gives up three consecutive hits in the eighth inning. All with two outs, too. Got two outs in the inning very quickly. And Jim Fanning comes out of that dugout. That's going to be a no. He now he goes back. Maybe his bullpen is not ready. There's the pitch to McBride. Rips a double down that right field line. Yes, here he comes. Fanning's coming out now. This boy's but it's a fine ball game. You'll oh, get he a should, fine hand from he this, should these indeed. people here at Olympic Stadium. You don't have to be a Montreal fan to give him uh, some applause. That just was some superb work by a 22-year-old. Bill Gullickson. We'll hear a lot from him. Jeff Reardon acquired from the Mets in the deal for Ellis Valentine at mid-year is coming in from the bullpen. We're going to see Gullickson off. Gullickson did get a tremendous ovation as he left the field, replaced by Jeff Reardon. Mike Schmidt with the game perhaps on the line. His thoughts about the right-hander of the Expos. Well, Jeff Reardon uh, is a guy that hadn't got a lot of publicity. He's not that well known, uh, uh, but but I know him. Uh, I faced him quite often. He's a good pitcher. It throws real hard. Uh, he cuts the ball across the strike zone. Uh, he's a tough guy to hit the ball out of the ballpark on. When he comes in the ball game, we just have to work him and, and try and scrape for a run here and there. And if he's in the ball game, the game will be close, and uh, we're going to do our best tonight to beat him. Okay, El Schmidt is in that potential spot. With Rose at third, tying run McBride at second. Two outs, eighth inning, 3-1 Expos. High, foul territory, parries with a look. Out of play. Schick this came out the, swinging, didn't he? This is the situation that makes manager gray and pitchers worry. What do you do? Second and third, first base open. Well, the old brother, you don't put the winning run on. Casey did it, though, a few times and got away with it. The guy at the plate had the best offensive year, really, of anybody in our league. Major. Anybody in the National League. So, uh, this, <laughs> you're looking at this. Did you yeah. put him on? You I don't know. I think I'd have to be down there on that little dirt area right in the middle of the field to make up my mind. I think I have to find out how I'm throwing. It's a tough situation. One and one. Reardon came in to get the final out yesterday. And Manny Trio sent a shot to left with two men on that was captured by Francona. And Francona and the Expo outfield playing Schmidt with respect. Hitter hitting 
behind Schmidt. Bad at 301 during the course of the year. Nine home runs and 67 runs batted in, and those 67 RBIs right up there with the leaders. He was a player of the month in September, so he finished ex very strong at 330. Coming down the stretch with seven home runs and 31 RBIs in that month. He was really on fire coming down the last four weeks of the season. First, by putting Schmidt at first, it also gives that Philly infield a play at every base. Out of play. Matthews, one for three tonight. His base hit was to right field. And his triple yesterday was also to right. Bases full of fills. Three to one. Expos in the eighth. Two out. Well, when 
decent position, and apparently he has. And that was a very courageous move he had to make in the top of the eighth inning. Well, I think it's the kind of move, Dick, that you make if, you, if, if, you, if it works out, you're a hero. If it doesn't, you're the GOAT. Oh, but you've got to go with your instincts. And I'm sure that with Mike Schmidt in that situation, he's been thinking about that, not just in that inning. That's been something that's been on his mind. It's even been for four or five days a week. Carter, who has the big two-run home run, the difference in the game is thrown out by Schmidt. Well, as you've heard it so many times, as you go over the hitters prior to a series, you come to one man and say, don't let this guy beat you. This guy can do nothing but beat you, and that's the tag on the on the Mike Schmitz, the Andre Dawson's, the Gary Carter's. Especially in the last three innings, one of my theories is if you don't pick that guy, don't let him beat you in the seventh, eighth, and ninth inning. They're going to get their hits. You're not going to stop him. You can't stop him. But don't let him beat you in those last three innings. McGraw, one of the many stars for the Phils in 1980. Had a little arm trouble here in September. Didn't pitch for two and a half weeks. Pete Rose has the second out in foul territory as Parrish fouls out. Looking ahead to the ninth inning for Philadelphia, it'll be Moreland, Boa, and Trio scheduled. about the college at the university influence on this Montreal team. Bonson went to Nebraska, Lee SC, Tulsa produced Steve Rogers, Reardon from UMass, Vandy, Scott Sanderson scheduled to pitch in the fourth game if there is one. A couple of Arizona kids, one of them being Terry Francona at the bat, as well as Brad Mills, US, that's UCSBs for Spirer, Florida A&M for Dawson. Really a college all-star team, this Montreal Expo Club. And it is part of their philosophy, and they really believe in it. It goes right to the top in John McHale. Francona, for Jerry Kindle's Arizona championship team in 1980. Rose doesn't get him. He's had trouble with that backhand all night. That's the third one. He's not been able to pick out of the dirt. going that way, Dick. Uh, fall on an astroturf. You're going to take a funny bounce. You get used to it going one way, and then all of a sudden, time-wise, it gets to you much quicker than you think it might. All of a sudden, the ball's there. Of course, it is. Unless I hurry up and get it to first base and misses it. That's really after the fact when you... I <laughs> can't believe it. <laughs> Terry Francona. Maybe he can't feel his hands. With his second hit. Two for three tonight. Spirer. RBI single and a walk. One for two. And they pick Francona off. No, they don't. Now he's out. Came off the bag. He had what would have been a stolen base, although picked off. But unable to maintain contact. And as he came off the bag, he alertly was tagged out. I think he had his mind to go up one way or the other, no matter what happened. He took a while getting rid of that ball. That's why he was initially safe. He slides past and goes right off the pace. Larry Bow alertly staying right with him. So that's it for the Expos in the eighth inning. The Bills come up. Their final turn. Moreland, Bow and Trio schedule down by two. that the umpire said he was forced off the bag. The Kenberg and Tom Seaver, Olympic Stadium in Montreal, ninth inning, three to one, the Expos lead it, as Moreland will start things for the Bills in their last at bat. John Gonzalez, our director, George Finkel, our producer, excellent work again tonight. Our thanks to Mike Cohen for his statistical work.
heap enough praise on Reardon.